Hi guys, me again. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Um, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Tobias's story um, and what happened, I suppose. And it is literally going to be a list of what happened. Um, if I talk too much about it, I'm just going to get too emotional and nothing's going to come out. I'm just going to be a blubbering mess. So I've got my tissues ready and um, I'm literally just going to talk through what happened and I'm going to miss out a lot of detail because it's a long story otherwise. But um, I am writing a book so hopefully one day, eventually, when I finish the book, if you really want to you'll be able to read the whole thing from start to finish and how I felt at each stage. Um, but this is all going to be from my perspective um, because... Jake and I were really good and we spoke all the way through it, but I don't really know how he felt about a lot of it. Um, I don't even know how I felt about a lot of it, so I wouldn't know what to say even if we did. Um, but yes, so I will start at the beginning, I suppose, um, with Tobias's pregnancy, which was going so well. Um, we got to 12 weeks and we told the world, as you do, um, did like a big Facebook announcement and it was lovely, he told everybody at work um, and then we got to 20 weeks and we went along to our 20 week appointment and um, they couldn't see the angle of the baby's feet which I thought was a really funny thing to check in the first place, I didn't even know that was one of the things to check um, or the size of something in his brain um, so we were invited back for another scan, but I'd heard so many stories of people that got invited back for double checking or because the baby was in a funny angle that, um, I didn't really think anything of it, neither did Jake. So we just left with our scan photo in hand, um, and booked another appointment for the following week. So, um, that was it. We just went and shared our news. The following week we went to, um, so it must have been about 21 weeks at that point, but Jake had already had two whole days off for scans and we wanted him to have all of his holiday when the baby actually arrived, which was supposed to be the 18th of December, so really close to Christmas. I was a little bit nervous it would come on Christmas Day. Um, so we said, oh, you don't need to come to this one, it's fine, it'll only be two minutes, they're just checking two things and then it'll be done. Um, so I asked my mum to go along. I thought it'd be really nice for me and my mum to share something together. Um, so that's what we did. Me and mum went and it was really lovely. I remember sitting and chatting in the waiting room just talking about baby stuff and how big my bump was and all this fun. You know, it's our first pregnancy so it was exciting. It was lots, um, lots to look forward to. Um, and we went into the scan room and that's when um, the sonographer looked over at the machine and she said, oh, fortunately, and then she's like, oh no, sorry, unfortunately, um, I think your baby has club foot and I didn't really know what that was. My mum was sort of reassuring me and saying, it's okay, don't worry, like it's easily fixed, you just... Um, wear braces for a little while on their feet when they're little and they grow out of it, their feet straighten and it's fine, don't worry. But when you're told something's wrong with your baby, it doesn't matter whether they've got a growth on their heart or their feet are a funny shape, there's something wrong with your baby and you don't know what that means, you don't know what it is. They're not the things that you prepare yourself for, you don't know how to react. Um, and I had not prepared myself at all. Life was pretty good. Life was really easy for us. I had no reason to suspect anything would go wrong. Um, so when she said that, I just broke down, just didn't know what to do. My poor mum was trying to like rub my shoulder and tell me everything was gonna be okay, but it was really sad. And then she called someone else into the room and I thought that was to confirm the club feet. But um, turns out it wasn't at all. It was actually um, to ask about his hands as well. Um, then they said, oh, he's got club foot, but I think his hands might be the same. And it was confirmed his hands were the same. 
And of course, my mum instantly asked the right question and said, well, is that the same? Can that be fixed? And she said, oh, I don't know. It's quite unusual. Um, we'll have to call in um, the senior midwife to come and talk to you. Um, so we got moved to a side room and me and mum just didn't know what to do. She just kept telling me everything would be okay and that we'll sort it out, we can fix it, it's okay, we can just give everything a chance, we can do anything, it doesn't matter. Um, I just remember her keep saying it'll be okay, bless her. Um, so the midwife came in eventually, um, it felt like forever, it was probably only a couple of minutes, but me and mum were already worked into a frenzy at this point. Um, and she came in and she tried to answer our questions, but as you can imagine, they were some deep questions that she didn't have the answers to. Um, so she just kept saying, we'll just have to wait and see. We're going to book a specialist appointment at um, a specialist hospital of fetal medicine and they're the experts. They'll be able to tell you what it means. They'll check everything else in a lot more detail, make sure there's nothing else. I was like, oh my gosh, there might be something else that they can't see. Um, it was just really scary, but we just kept asking, like, can it be fixed? Will the baby be okay? Will it be able to walk? All these things that she just didn't know either. Um, so eventually we left. And obviously then I had the trouble of trying to work out how to break the news to Jake who was at work and over a half an hour drive away and I didn't want him to drive home really upset and I don't know have a car accident or something I didn't want him to panic but I wanted it to be clear and then I thought oh maybe I'll just wait till he gets home and then tell him once he's at home but Jake never finishes work on time he likes to live there so I didn't know what to do but by the time I was trying to figure it all out he actually rang me in the end and oh, it's a good job I didn't think of a script to say because as soon as he answered the phone I just started crying and crying and I just said something's wrong with the baby and before I could say anything else he just said right I'm on my way home and hung up I was like okay that's fine that's all he needed to know um so I got out and rang my best friend ever and I don't know how, but she always makes everything seem better. My lovely Susanna. Um, she's the best. Everyone needs a best friend like her. Um, she sort of managed to calm me down. Her sister's a midwife, so that really helped because she, she was able to talk to her sister and try and find out what sort of what the next step would be, I suppose. Um, I'm going into so much detail, this is dragging on, I'm really sorry. I had not planned to go into this much detail. <laughs> But anyway, moving on from that. So something was wrong with his hands and feet. We'd booked in a specialist scan on the Friday. So we then had to go home and sit and wait for the specialist scan to come around. And that was the longest wait ever. Even now, after everything we've been through, those few days were the hardest days of my life. They were awful. I was carrying this lovely little bump that everyone knew about, everyone wanted to be updated, everyone wanted to share a moment with this little baby and I knew that something was wrong and I didn't want them to know, I didn't want people to think there was anything wrong with me or wrong with my baby, I just wanted it to be special like it should be, um, so I just hid <laughs> for how many days it was, I don't know, it felt like a lifetime. Um, I didn't go out, I didn't speak to anybody, um, we were living with my nana at the time because the house was being renovated, so we just stayed in and hid and just waited for the specialist scan and in that time we diagnosed this poor little baby with everything we could read, it, yeah, it had like four different diagnoses every day, just whenever we read something else we were like, oh that could be it, that could be it, this could be it. And none of them said that he wouldn't be able to breathe. We didn't know that at that point. Um, we just knew his hands and feet weren't formed properly. So we were trying to figure out sort of if we'd need to convert one of the 
rooms downstairs to a bedroom, whether we needed a bigger car to fit in a wheelchair, all these things went through our heads. Um, but we went to the specialist scan, Jake came with me this time, and um, lots was very uncertain, but the only thing that was a definite clear picture was that his hands and feet were not formed properly. Um, and that he wasn't moving very much. So I could feel him moving from, I've just said him, <laughs> I gave the game away, um, from about 15, 16 weeks, so quite early, I think. Um, but at 20 weeks, he still wasn't moving a lot. And the sonographer said that he would expect the movements to be stronger and more frequent than what they, are, what they were. So that was a little bit concerning, but he still said the heart looks fine, the brain looks fine. Um, sort of he's moving and reacting around a bit so like he can move it's fine um, just sort of keep an eye on it which fine um, the doctor we had was very straightforward very matter-of-fact um, quite a quirky character but I loved that and he even gave us his opinion a few times, which I know is so hard to pull out of medical professionals. They just want to stick to facts all the time. Um, so it was really nice that he could turn around and say, look, there's nothing we can do. Almost stop worrying about it. That's obviously not the exact words he said, but that's what I got from it. He was like, you're not going to terminate the pregnancy. You've made that quite clear. Um, so just wait and see. I was like, okay, <laughs> fine, we'll wait and see. Um, so we left after about an hour and a half, I think this scan was, it was a really long scan, but I felt so confident when I walked out that he had checked everything. I had all the confidence in him, um, that he was very thorough. Um, and just before we walked out, we decided we wanted to know the gender of the baby and as I've already let slip, it was a boy. Um, so... Yeah, we found out in like 21 weeks, which is really weird. I know we weren't going to find out originally, but when things started to go a bit pear-shaped, we wanted something to be excited about. We wanted to get as ready as we could be. So we wanted to go shopping and get everything sorted. So we found out the gender of the baby then. It was a little boy, which was lovely, but everyone kind of knew that anyway, because he was causing so many problems. Only boys cause this much problems. <laughs> um, he also warned us of... Um, like tracking movements and things would be really really important um and he then said we'll see you again at 28 weeks so we went on holiday jake went away on a work trip to the philippines for a few weeks um and we just carried on with life it was just i don't know i don't know whether i switched off from it or whether we were just really naive and thought right well nothing else is wrong so we can cope with a child with physical disabilities, we'll make adaptions, we'll do whatever we can, um, it'll be fine. That was it, it'll be fine, of course it will. Um, 28 weeks came round, went back to see our fabulous doctor and as soon as I walked in he went, whoa, you're big. I was like, yeah, I know, like started rubbing my bum, I was like, yeah, I love my bum, isn't it so good? And he was like, hmm. Let me measure you a second and his face just dropped his face was not the same as my excitement i loved having a big bump he clearly did not think that was a good thing um so i was 28 weeks and i was measuring at 32 i believe 32 weeks 34 weeks something like that um which suggested that i had too much fluid um i didn't even know but the baby's supposed to swallow some of the fluid um to practice their breathing and their sucking and their swallowing and obviously our baby was not doing that as it should be um but we had a little scan and we could see his stomach so we knew that he was swallowing something but he just wasn't swallowing enough which was a little bit of a concern and i was really worried but as always our lovely doctor just said just wait and see it's okay there's nothing you can do we again were offered a termination or um I can't even think what they call it, a compassionate termination or something, I don't know. But for us it just was never an option, so we just kept refusing it. I think in total we got offered it like maybe five times. Um, we tried to make it clear, but 
they have to ask, don't they? They have to check. Um, so we left our 28 week scan. He um, diagnosed me with too much fluid, which I think is called polyhydramnosis or something like that. Um, and he also told us the warning signs of labour. So because the baby was so small and because I was so big, labour wouldn't be as you would expect. It wouldn't be like a like painful and like your water's breaking and then, you know, you've got a few days. He was like, if your water breaks, you need to get to hospital straight away because as soon as the waters go, your baby's going to be so tiny that labour's going to be really quick. Um get quite a few towels ready and Jake was like oh yeah we've got a couple of towels in the car he was like no 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 you need you need a few towels maybe a plastic bag um, <laughs> he was like yeah just get packed um because when the waters broke he described it as like a flood under the door that's what he said it's really gross isn't it sorry um but yeah so that's what we did we came home Got our bags packed which at 28 weeks saying to get your bags packed was quite scary um he also said that he would book another scan um for 34 weeks no that's not right no he didn't book another scan i think he was going to do another scan later on at maybe like 36 weeks when i was like almost ready but um yeah, we just left and I can't remember when the next scan was booked for, I honestly can't, but he told us the warning signs to look out for. And one of those was chest pain. So when I started getting chest pain at home, um, it must have been about a week later, I thought, oh no, like maybe we should um, go to the hospital. Um, so that's what we did. Went to the hospital, found A&E for the night whilst they did some blood tests. And I was getting really cross because I needed to go to the maternity ward. But... I sat there anyway, eventually they sent me to the maternity ward and I was there for a few days, the pain in my chest disappeared, nothing had happened, I was like I'm fine, I want to go home now, I was quite big at this point, I was uncomfortable, um, the hospital was actually really nice, I can't complain at all but there's only so much hospital food you can take and you don't sleep very well when you're in hospital do you and I was fine I wanted to be at home um mum came to visit one day and I remember laughing and saying to her, I better don't leave I better just stay here now until he's born guess what happened um baby's heart rate dropped a couple of times um on the Thursday and the first time they said, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it too much. Um, it happens, but we're just gonna keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't happen again. And it happened again. So then I was moved down to the maternity, um, the labor ward, sorry. And um, they said to call Jake in. So I don't know what time this was, it must have been really early hours of the morning, Jake was called in. Um, and the heart rate dropped again. This time it was for quite a long time. Um, or it felt like a long time anyway. And um, they still didn't really do much, I don't think. This was all a real blur, I don't really know what was going on. But um, Jake was there, his heart rate dropped a couple of times. I felt fine, I was absolutely fine. Um, and we were both trying to get some sleep because obviously we've been up all night trying to monitor the heart rate. Um, but just as we were drifting off to sleep, my waters break. Um, so I was in the right place at the right time, thank God. Um, yeah, so my waters broke and that's when um, Jake was like, well, I'm hungry. I haven't had breakfast. <laughs> So he went off to McDonald's to get breakfast and he also went to get me some cold drinks because I was so hot. Um, and as soon as he got back, there was just floods and floods of people coming in. They started pumping me with all sorts of drugs. Um, and then the surgeon came in and said, right, we're gonna deliver baby by C-section because um, he was breech, so he was facing the wrong way, so he needs to be delivered by a C-section. Um, and we were like, okay, yeah, that's fine, like, still 
no drama. I think we were just in a world of our own. We didn't really understand what was going on around us. We were just accepting everything. Lyra's having a drink in here. <laughs> um, Lyra's our toy poodle, by the way. I don't know if you can see her down there. Lyra! Hi! Good girl. <laughs> um, rudely interrupted. Um, yes. So, they, um came in and then we were sort of trying to take it all in didn't really care I was tired and I felt fine but then he said yeah you're gonna have a baby before midday I was like ah, I didn't realize it'd be that soon um so then I started to panic a little bit because I'm not ready for this I don't know what's gonna happen started to sink in a little bit and then the senior midwife explained what would happen who was going to be on call because they knew that the baby would have some difficulties and they wanted to do extra checks as soon as he was born. Um, she also explained that because baby wasn't swallowing very much, it could mean that he couldn't breathe. And up until this point, I don't know whether people have told me in an indirect way, I didn't realise that. I didn't know that he might not be able to breathe. I thought he was going to be disabled. I didn't realise that he might not survive. I I wasn't prepared for that at all. Um, so that kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. And ultimately that's what happened. I went in for a C-section, he was delivered and he couldn't breathe. Um, I think it took about half an hour in the end to get a breathing tube down. Um, but when they did, it was then in the wrong place. They had to try two or three times. They eventually got it in the right place. And by that time, obviously, he'd been without oxygen for quite a while. Um, but they managed to get him stabilised. And um, But so half an hour had gone by. I hadn't seen my baby. And they just kept telling me that he couldn't breathe. And they kept coming to give us information in this half an hour. They kept coming to give us updates. But every time it was just, we're coming to give you an update, but the breathing tube still isn't in. That was it for half an hour. What do you do? I was just texting everybody, <laughs> telling them to pray that they would get this tube in. And we just kept seeing floods of people come through the door with more machines. And um, you could tell everyone from around the hospital was fighting for our baby everyone um yeah i'm really gonna try not to cry <laughs> um yes they eventually got the breathing tube in that's the important part they did get it in um and we were taken out to a side room and we finally got to see him he they brought him in really delicately really quickly pumped me up on the bed because obviously I just had a c-section so I couldn't really move very much um, and I was able to reach over and just touch his hand um, and that was it they took him away again honestly it must have been like 30 seconds and that was it took him away upstairs um, and Jake was able to go and see him which was really nice obviously I then called my mum and dad in and my friend Susanna that I called when we found out something was wrong um, she was actually in the hospital visiting her nana at the time so she came up to see me um, there were lots of people and um, normally they wouldn't have visitors but um, she made it very clear that if we wanted people to meet him they could come and meet him which again was really scary she didn't have a lot of confidence that he was going to make it um, so everyone came to see him, I say everyone, it wasn't, it was my parents, Jake's parents, my friend, um, and I think that was about it, honestly I can't remember, I'm really sorry if you were there too, but I was out of it, um, but then the senior midwife said right, they're going to call the ANTS team to come out, um, which is charity based, um, team of people with uh, neonatal ambulances, um, so they were going to come out and assess Tobias and they would be the ones to decide whether, um, out of three options. So option one was that he would go to 
um, Luton and Dunstable Specialist Hospital where we had our scans. So I was fine with that. I felt comfortable with that. Um, option two, that he would go to the Rosie at Addenbrooke's. And at that time, I hadn't really heard much about it, but I was pleased that he was going somewhere and that they were really good too. And then there was option three. Now, option three, um, she said they might decide that he's too poorly to go anywhere and that the best thing he can do is to stay with his mum and dad for as long as he can. Um, so that was tough. Uh, obviously I was praying it would not be option three because that meant that no one could help him. They wouldn't be sending him anywhere. They wouldn't be trying to get any help for him. Um, it would sort of be as long as he can last kind of thing. Um, but the ants team came out and they had a look at him and then she came down and broke the news that he was going to be transferred. Oh my god. <laughs> I cannot tell you how happy that made me. Um, taking my newborn baby away from me was the best thing that could have ever happened. It just meant that there was a bit of hope. Um, so that's what they did and Jake was able to go in the ambulance with Tobias. Um, so that was good. He wasn't on his own. They went off and um, luckily I was able to be transferred later that night. Just before they put him in the ambulance, they brought him into my room so I could see him one more time. Um, we got our first family photo, which I will post later on at some point. Um, it's not exactly the posed, dreamy, like, oh, isn't this a beautiful family photo I dreamt of? But it's all three of us in one picture, and I'm blessed to have that. Um, yeah, he went off, I went off afterwards. Um, later that evening but I wasn't able to see him anymore that day um, they were getting him like stable and set up in um, the NICU at the Rosie um, so I was down on the ward in my own separate room which was nice but the Rosie is one of the best hospitals and I can't fault them at all like the nurses and people taking care of us were fantastic, honestly. Even though we were over-analysing everything, there's still nothing to complain about. But the hospital itself, I was then sat on the ward in a separate room, but opposite in the corridor, there were new mums with their babies. So all night, my baby was somewhere else in the hospital didn't know if he was going to be okay and I had to sleep listening to a newborn crying babies and their mums walking them up and down outside my room all night. It was like a kick in the face, it really was. Did not need that but I shouldn't moan. I was lucky to be there in the first place but to listen to newborns and see them with their parents just, oh, just made me realise they were so lucky, they did, They had no idea how bad it could go. I just wanted to scream at them and say, do you realise how much I want that? I just, oh. If you're a mum and you have your own baby at home, savour every single second and take as many photos and videos as you possibly can. Um, and hopefully one day they'll be looking back at your videos. Um, keep getting so emotional, I'm really sorry. <sighs> yes, where was I? He was there, he was safe. I was there, I was fine, I was being well looked after. Um, and eventually after a few days I was discharged from the hospital but obviously Tobias was still in there, he was still really poorly. He didn't have much of a try at breathing himself so they tried to take his breathing tube out a few times, but it just didn't work. He needed to have it straight back again. Um, his muscles were really weak and we did lots of investigations to find out why they were so weak. Was it something to do with his brain? Was it his nerves? Was it his muscles themselves? Um, and he was there for 51 days. He lived his whole life at the Rosie. Um, and he was so well taken care of. Um, we did everything we could to try and 
find out what was wrong and to try and find a cure to try and save him or at least make him better so that he could come home and have a little bit of normality um we knew life wasn't going to be easy but you know we were prepared to do that we didn't really care as long as he was at home and that he was healthy um but after 51 days um there wasn't really much else we could do there was no magic drug that worked there was no surgery that could fix it there was nothing we could do we just had the time together to make all our memories to take lots of photos and videos we got to do handprints we got to make casts of his hands and feet as well which are so lovely um we got to read him stories after 11 days of him being born we got him out for a cuddle um it was a weird cuddle he was on a pillow and covered in wires and tubes but it was fine um we were really really lucky to have that time with him um and we got him out in the night a lot of the time because it was nice and quiet then um, we got to give him cuddles and it was just a bit more peaceful with not so many parents in the same room which was nice um but yeah after 51 days we decided he was getting tired and that we would have a christening and say goodbye to him so on the 1st of December 2019 he passed away um all of his family came in in the morning we had a christening for him and then at 11 o'clock um after that they left and me and Jake stayed and just held him and gave him a cuddle whilst we took out um, or withdrew support, that's what they call it, they withdrew the support so we took out his breathing tube and he passed away. Um, but yeah, we were so lucky, we, we really were. Um, we shouldn't have really had even a second with him because he couldn't breathe. And even though we saw him moving a bit more throughout those 51 days, we had to keep reminding ourselves that he could not breathe. He would look up at you and he would smile and he would do all these things to make you think that he was okay, but a little bugger couldn't breathe. <laughs> and Jake calls him a little git all the time because he just causes problems. Um, and they're probably really dark jokes, but you have to make a joke of it, don't you? He was our gorgeous little boy and he should have been with us forever but 51 days we'll have to do and now we're just trying to live this crazy life afterwards and soak up every second of it and try and carry him through to the rest of our lives in whatever way we can um, and tell everyone about him um, yeah I've started that through my Instagram page um, which has connected me with so many parents and I'm so grateful to all of them I don't know how I would be coping at all without them um, so if any of you are watching this thank you so much um, and if you're a bereaved parent yourself please reach out because I'd love to chat to you and get to know you a little bit better um, there's something special about having similar experiences we can just share things and we know what to say and what not to say, we know how to help and I don't know, I love you. <laughs> um, thanks for listening to my really long story, sorry it was so much longer than I wanted it to be, it was like ages. <laughs> um, but now you know what happened and I will go into more of the 51 days we had with Tobias and I will talk about them all day but this is the one difficult bit that I wanted to get out of the way. Um, and now that's done I'm gonna go and I will share more videos with you and I will share parts of what we did with Tobias when he was here with us um, and I hope you enjoy joining me on my journey um, I am so grateful I'm so blessed and thank you for watching <laughs>